Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. I will start with our daily updates. We now have 8,548 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 1,966 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has eight cases and Sarnia-Lambton has reported 39 cases. Michigan now has 7,615 cases with 2,080 cases in Detroit. I'm very sorry to report our first death due to COVID-19. We now have 92 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex. 27% of our cases are in the 50 to 59 year old age group. 45% are male and 55% are female. The health unit follows up directly with everyone who tests for COVID-19, both positive and negative results. Those that are awaiting results are to remain in self-isolation. If you have tested negative for COVID-19, you must remain in self-isolation for the remainder of the 14 days. Overall, 1,134 individuals have been tested for COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex and of those tested, 317 tests are pending. Testing for COVID-19 should be based on clinical assessment. Where there are shortages of testing kits, then the following gr groups will be prioritized. Symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and staff in long-term care facilities and retirement homes, hospitalized patients admitted with respiratory symptoms, symptomatic members of remote, isolated rural or indigenous communities, symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada. Please con continue to visit our website at wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. Many of our frequently asked questions are posted on our website. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are three options. Complete the online self-assessment tool, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary health care provider for a phone assessment or a virtual assessment if that's available. They will guide you for next steps, including contacting public health or attending an assessment center. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, it is with great regret and sadness that we report our first COVID-19 death in our community. The deceased was a male in his 80s with underlying chronic conditions, admitted to the hospital with respiratory conditions, and he was soon transferred to ICU where he died last night. The, the deceased traveled to Michigan before developing symptoms. We recognize that this is a very difficult time for the family of the deceased, and my thoughts and prayers are with them. Seeing this tra tragedy in our community now made the threat real for many of us in our community. I will urge all of you not to panic, but to stay calm and follow the public health recommendations all the time. Please, please, I urge you not to go outside if you don't have to. If you do go outside, always maintain a distance of two meters from each other. Look after your family members, look after your neighbor, support them while still maintaining the two meter distance. People with comorbidities are at a higher risk of developing severe complications from COVID-19. If you are someone with a weakened immune system, either as a result of your age, any history of medical conditions such as cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, diabetes, cancers, etc., please do not go outside at all. Have someone bring your groceries and essentials and drop it off at your doorstep. Do not interact with anyone in, in, in person. Please stay connected with your friends and family using technology and social media. We must act now and must act together to protect the spread of COVID-19 in our community and prevent some of these deaths that are happening in our community. Break the chain of transmission. That is people who may have COVID and are symptomatic. Even if you are waiting for your result, even if you are hoping to get tested, Stay home, self-isolate, and break the chain of transmission and do your part. People who are not sick and do not have any symptoms, stay home, spend time with family, 
do not meet anyone who doesn't live with you and break the chain of transmission by not contracting the disease and not spreading it to others. People who are essential workers, please follow the guidance to, to work safely while still maintaining your two meters distance from everyone. Wash hands frequently and often or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Use appropriate personal protective equipment depending on the nature of your work as per infection prevention and control guidance. Break the chain of transmission by not contracting it in the first place, and even if you end up in contracting the disease, by maintaining the physical distance of two meters, you are not spreading it to others and breaking the chain of transmission in the community. Please break the chain of transmission in our community. Save yourself, save your family, save your loved ones, save your neighbor, save your parents and grandparents, save the community. Please break the chain of transmission. Please be safe. Do your part in protecting your community. Break the chain of transmission. Thank you. Questions from the media. We'll start with CTV. It's not really a question. I think now it's now it's real. I'll just start with the statement. How does that make you feel? It is. Uh, it is. It is sad. It is. Uh, it is making the risk more real, and people who are not realizing the potential impact of what they are facing, they should open their eyes now and they can see that it is happening in our community. We have seen in across the world, thousands and thousands of people dying. We definitely don't want it in our community. We have to do our part. We have to do everything to prevent the spread of the disease in our community. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, the White House uh, yesterday held a press conference with a remarkably grim tone that the, the task force is predicting 100,000 to 240,000 deaths in the U.S. Uh, related to COVID-19, what kind of impact uh, do you expect in the Windsor Essex region? Well, based on the various modeling that has been put out there by uh, different epidemiologists, uh, I think there's it's no secret people will die. I think it's only a matter of how many of them die and how many of them can be saved by taking all these measures. The government of Canada has been proactive in many ways to put these strong measures in place, but people need to follow those measures. If people are not following those measures, those measures won't save us. I think it is us who will save us and our community. We have to do our part, and we if any, any death we can save, that is a gift to the community. When we are talking about the number of people who may potentially die, the number could be in hundreds, could be in thousands, depending on how people are reacting and how we people are following. We will be providing more details with respect to specific, like the number that is projected based on the various modeling uh, in a couple of days, working with our epidemiologists. But the idea again is all these models and projection are based on certain assumptions, certain behaviors, certain uh, uh, ways that people are following those assumptions. If people can change everything, if we strictly follow it, we can reduce the number. We can reduce the number by hundreds, by thousands. If we're not following it, we can increase the number by hundreds, by thousands. So I think it is in our hands. It is all of us. It's not just me. It's not just the hospitals. It's not just the politicians. It is all of us. We have to take our part. We have to do our part to save those lives. Any questions from CBC? Yeah, I'm just wondering if you could break down um, from the total number, how many of these are trauma-related, how many are community uh, transmission, how many are in hospital, and how many are healthcare workers? I know that's a loaded question, but I know you did that yesterday. Um, so um, we are uh, updating our data pretty much every day, and uh, I think it would be uh, redundant to report it every day. We'll try to report it every few days just to give you more details. But from what we reported yesterday uh, based on the analysis of 44 cases, we did further analysis on the 65 cases that we reported yesterday um, uh, as, as confirmed. The numbers didn't change much. Still, we have 70% of the people with uh, a travel history, and among those who travel, there's 70% of them travel to Michigan, and uh, at least still, the, the, the cases that we have report on, still one-third of them are healthcare workers uh, traveling uh, across the border. And I'm, and I'm not blaming any of those healthcare workers for doing the job that they are doing. 
I think they're doing an excellent job. This is what they're trained for. This is what they're passionate about. That's, that's, that's what their passion is, to save lives, to help people who are suffering. Detroit has seen a number of cases in their community, and they really need those people. What we want to identify is what's our risk to our community and how we can minimize that risk to our community. So uh, having said that, I think we'll continue to um, analyze the, the, the reports as we are getting it, and we will report it um, every few days uh, by summarizing all those details on, from those cases. And just as a follow-up to that, um, yesterday we received a statement from the CEO of the hospital, David Mujay, uh, about our voter story uh, that we worked on yesterday. And he, I, I think you just touched on it, but he wrote to us and said that he's concerned about those who are advocating for further restrictions on Windsor Ice, uh, working in Detroit healthcare because it'll hurt the Michigan uh, system and, and they can't afford the loss of healthcare workers. And, and this is a quote here, I'll just read it to you and I'll get you to respond. Continuing to indicate daily the number of Windsorites who work in healthcare in Detroit and their positive COVID-19 results is not appropriate. Healthcare workers are not immune to COVID-19. I'm wondering what you think about that perspective. Well, my job as the medical officer of health is to protect my community. The community has given me this task and my recommendation is to my community as respectful and as concerned I am about the spread of COVID-19 around the world in various community, but I have a job to protect my community. What my recommendations or what my thoughts are is in the best interest of my community. I'm not concerned about what is happening outside of my community. Yes, as a broader scale, I am concerned if it, is any, if it has an impact. But if there is anything that we as a community need to do, that's where my focus is. I'm not concerned about what people are thinking about these recommendations and how it will affect anyone. My concern is how it will affect my community. What do we need to do to protect my community. That's where my recommendations are coming from. That's where my heart lies. And that's what I will continue to focus on. And I'll continue to report on the issues, continue to make recommendations to protect my community. Uh, yeah, we have a letter sent to us, somebody asking um, that Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Ahmed is not going to be able to Well, uh, my uh, media statement is already out there. We issued this statement back on Friday that uh, we, we did not make that recommendations. I think it is an equity issue for people to get across the town. They recognize that they will be at risk by taking those transit, but they have limited options. If they do not own a car, if they do not uh, have anyone who can drive them around, they, we are putting those individuals at risk by not giving them an opportunity to get the essentials that they need. If they want to rely on someone else to move them around, it is also a risk. So I think we have to carefully balance the risk and benefit, just like the same way we're talking about all these essential businesses. In an ideal world, yeah, if we can just all shut them down, we could, but recognizing that people need to still need to eat. People still need their medicine. People still need to, to do things to maintain the basic societal uh, need. Electricity need to running. Uh, uh, water needs to come to our tap. So all those things are essential. And as much as we like to see strong measures, we also have to balance it with what is needed for everyone in the community, in the better interest of everyone. So I think if people are following some of those directions, they can still protect themselves, and they and we should be focusing on those measures without causing any undue hardship or harm to any individual. Okay, just following that, but do you have the authority to order transit to continue operations? Uh, unfortunately, no, I do not have the authority to have them open the okay. transit. Okay. Yes, I do. Uh, the deceased who passed away, do we know when he was admitted to the hospital and when he went to 
Um, some of these details we are still investigating. We, um, all I can say is the deceased traveled to Michigan before developing symptoms and then um, presented to the hospital and uh, was later admitted to uh, the hospital and uh, ended up in an ICU bed where he died. And he was taken to the hospital because of his chronic injuries or was it partially chronic for, and COVID symptoms? It was, uh, it was uh, resulting from some symptoms suggestive of uh, respiratory conditions and where he was assessed and then uh, all the further follow-up and workup uh, was done accordingly based on the clinical management of the case and also tested for COVID, which was positive, and then he was transferred to ICU because of respiratory failure. We had our first case in Windsor Essex on March 20th, um, reporting our first death on the 31st. Um, the chief of staff said that we all knew this was going to happen. Did we expect it to happen within a week and a half, 10 days? Um, any, any comment on that? Well, it's hard to say, depending on who is contracting the disease. And uh, some people are at a higher risk of uh, developing more severe complications and uh, potentially dying. Uh, so it really depends on who is contracting it. The messaging, the control measures that we are trying to put is to protect those vulnerable people. And my message today is also to those individuals still, if they haven't heard it before, if they have any kind of chronic conditions, if they, ha if they are um, uh, immunocompromised for any reason, either by, the, by their age or any medical condition, they should just not go outside, period. Just stay home. Now is the time where the disease is circulating. There are many people out there in the community who, can poten who are potentially infected with COVID. We would never know. They may be at an earlier stage of symptoms and may not even re uh, recognize themselves and can still transmit the infection. So that's why some of these high-risk population, they should just limit or uh, eliminate any need for any physical interaction with anyone. Stay home. Have someone deliver your essentials, your groceries, your medications, anything that you need at your doorstep. Do not interact with them. Do not connect with them. Try to be more social by using social media. Facebook, Skype, there are so many technology out there that people can use to stay connected. It is also important for people to be socially connected, but physically distanced. So I think we need to do that. And unless we do it, we won't break the chain of transmission and we have to break the chain of transmission to limit the number of cases and the morbid, uh, morbidity and mortality in our community. Any questions? Uh, another just general question. Uh, we heard what was happening at the retirement homes in Bob Cajun. Do we know of any outbreaks locally at long-term care homes or retirement homes at all or no? At this point, there is no retirement home under COVID outbreak. Um, there are retirement homes who are in some kind of respiratory outbreak, which is typical for this season, but we do not have any uh, uh, COVID-19 outbreak in our region. Good to hear, thank you. Any questions from windsorite.ca? Pardon me? Any other questions from the media? Oh, CTV. Yeah, we talked about uh, the gap in the test results earlier. You know, it, it's you know at first it was four days, then it went up to like ten to fourteen days. Um, where are we now? And and is that picture becoming more real time than it has been in the last few days? So. Um so there are now multiple labs that are operating at this point to test for COVID. Uh, our main lab now is London Lab, and uh, London Lab is now focusing more on prioritizing those uh, individuals who are currently being tested. Um, and some of those tests, uh, at, uh, as Teresa mentioned, that there are some of these priority group that who are prioritized for testing. So anyone who is under that priority we expect to get the results back within 24 to 48 hour maximum. And in some time, some cases, it's coming back in 24 hours. So that's a good news. But on the flip side, for someone who has mild symptoms, those individuals, the direction could be that don't bother t getting tested because your clinical management will not change based on your diagnosis. So if you are positive, the recommendation would be Stay home, self-isolate yourself from your own family member and also from the rest of the community. 
if your severe if your uh, if your symptoms get severe then you got to come and see a, a doctor or get some additional work up done because what happens with with covid in in the clinical situation is people can deteriorate very immediately so especially if they have any chronic conditions or if they, especially if they're old so people can just quickly go from one end of the spectrum to the other so if their symptoms are getting worse and it's not getting better that's the time that we would want to test those individuals to make sure that we are not missing any of those things but for the majority now it's out here you may be asked to say hey just go home monitor your symptoms stay home self-isolate do not go outside do not do anything and when we're talking about this chain of transmission i think people need to recognize that that is the most important thing that they can do even if at your workplace you are working with other colleagues and there may be some concern that if someone is uh, gets positive then am i at risk if you're still following the two meters distance your risk would be pretty much zero because you're not coming in that close contact range to contract the disease if you are working in the same environment it puts you at a higher risk but it's still if you're maintaining that you are reducing that risk just follow those directions it is in the best interest of yourself your family and also for the community okay um I, I, online last night people were sending me stuff uh, one of them was you know the testing labs right we talk about real time and you know getting everybody up to date as soon as you can uh the lab testing you know you said that you know everything's being sent to London, um, people have said that, you know, why, are asked, why aren't we using the University of Windsor for testing like that, you know, as a lab? So, uh, first of all, I don't make those decisions which labs are open and which lab could test. Uh, what I know is uh, these type of tests requires a specialized labs that is not available, at least at the Windsor Regional Hospital. I'm not fully aware of what kind of lab exists at Windsor, uh, University of Windsor. But if they do have the capacity, I think there are ways that they can connect with the public health uh, labs and the ministry to put up a case that if they are capable and if they meet that criteria to be uh, designated as a lab, then why not? But I think those criteria are not as easy to meet uh, because of certain requirements. Those are our level three, level four labs, and it has to meet a very strict criteria. If we can get something, great. But until then, we still have to rely on what uh, uh, existing labs we have. Any qu other questions from the media? Yes, I have a question if there are any plans to open up any further assessment centers anytime soon. Um, I'm not aware of that. Uh, I think our assessment center is uh, operating um, at a fairly steady pace, and uh, there is no indication uh, at this point that. Uh, um, that they will be opening up uh, more centers. There's a capacity to open it, but I think it really depends on our capacity to test those uh, specimens as well. So I think it's just a balance. And um, as I said, most in most cases, most individuals, especially at this time, may not even be uh, get tested because if they have mild symptoms. So I think the focus is now more on how do you prevent this spread and test only when you your clinical management would be different if we test you for most 80 percent or more people will recover on their own at their home and they do not require any medical treatment thank you and i have one more question which that's okay just about uh, transit now that transit is no longer available to a lot of people um, they're having to turn to taxis or ubers I'm just wondering if there's anything that the health unit can oversee where that's concerned to make sure um, that these vehicles are being cleaned and sanitized appropriately. I'm wondering how that's being enforced. So that's a uh, that's a that's a challenge. We 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 got that uh, um, letter, uh, and uh, from what we can see is there are things that we can we can make a recommendations to to protect those people if they are using. Uh, these type of uh, private uh, transport, and uh, we will be uh, we will be providing some recommendations around that. Oh, when will that happen? Uh, soon, uh, maybe today, uh, at some time today. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.
All right, thank you very much. And again, it's uh, with great regret, um, and people should pay attention and should follow the uh, the directions. And please break the chain.